So this is a bit of a weird one. A YouTube creator's channel has completely disappeared after receiving a huge number of copyright strikes from the fine folks at Take-Two Interactive and 2K Games. Take-Two Interactive and 2K Games have been embroiled in a bit of a messy controversy involving the YouTuber, who goes by the name of Sup Matto, amid claims that they sent private investigators to the content creator's home following his publication of leaked content from Borderlands 3. Last week, Sotmato said that these, well, these hired goons showed up to my home, trespassed on my private property, and questioned me. This all stems from a Twitch extension called Echocast, which exposed information from a private Twitch account that revealed assets from Borderlands 3. Sotmato did not discover these assets, he did not discover this exploit, but he did report on it, and he did share the assets. As a result of this, Take-Two Interactive sent two PIs to his home, and 2K Games issued a number of copyright claims on his YouTube channel. Sotmato published a video on this issue talking about what a tense situation it was to have two strangers show up at your property. While 2K Games maintains it's done nothing out of the ordinary, it's not overstepped its bounds, it was just doing what it had to do. They've been issuing pretty much the same response to any publication that asks, saying, Take two and 2K take the security and confidentiality of trade secrets, ooh, very seriously. The act we've taken is the result of a 10-month investigation and a history of this creator profiting from breaking our policies, leaking confidential information about our product, and infringing our copyrights. The information he's sharing about the situation is incomplete and in some cases untrue. Not only were many of his actions illegal, but they were negatively impacting the experiences of other content creators and our fans in anticipation for the game. We will take the necessary actions to defend against leaks and infringement of our intellectual property that not only potentially impact our business and partners, but more importantly may negatively impact the experiences of our fans and customers. Yeah seems a little bit melodramatic. Calling leaked information from a game a trade secret, I mean, that, that seems to overstate what's going on here. Trade secrets are kept from rival businesses so they don't gain an advantage over another company. And I'm not sure that imagery from Borderlands 3 constitutes that, not to that degree. More to the point, 2K Games complains about Submato violating their policies while failing to note that those policies are 2K Games' policies not an individual content creator's policies, not a reporter's policies. None of us have any moral obligation to keep a publisher's secrets for it. I've done a video on this in the past asking whether journalists, publications, YouTubers have a duty to keep leaked information to themselves, to keep news stories under wraps, and I don't think they do. I don't think they have that obligation. Publishers seem to view all games media as a mere extension of games PR, so they get very offended they get very upset when information they don't greenlight specifically gets out there. But what's really interesting here is that Sutmato seems completely willing to acquiesce to take to Interactive. Whether he genuinely feels bad about it as a massive fan of Borderlands, or if he was just shit scared by the private investigators showing up, he actually stated publicly, since I've had time to reflect on the situation, I'd say excitement got the better of my judgement. As an adult, as someone who's thought about it, it was a bit of a shitty thing to do. There is an allegation that Sutmato used a leaked information to make additional money, saying further leaked Borderlands 3 information was available for a $5 membership to his YouTube channel that subsequently granted access to a private Discord. This was reported by sources to IGN, and if that's the case, then well, that bit specifically was a silly thing to do. If true, that goes beyond simply reporting on leaks to actively distributing leaked information for money. Even so, the Discord was already shut down, and Sutmato himself closed his own Twitter account, and has gone out of his way to appease Take-Two and 2K, which makes the entire disappearance of the YouTube channel seem just a tiny bit harsh. Maybe he closed it off himself, maybe it was the number of copyright strikes getting YouTube to eradicate it. Sutmato's gone completely radio silent, he said he's taking a big break from social media, giving himself, in his words, time to be depressed. It seems like he feels really bad about it in a way that I admittedly would not because I don't feel that bad about the self-interested grievances of a corporation, but that's just me. Regardless, Take-Two Interactive has a habit of throwing its corporate weight around a little bit too much, going a bit too far, overstepping its bounds to assert dominance over anyone it feels breaks 
embargo, leaks information, basically does anything they don't approve of. Where other publishers may blacklist an outlet or issue a DMCA claim through the normal channels, Take-Two likes to reach out from the internet and get into people's real lives. In 2015, the company sent private investigators to a GTA 5 modder's house. Once again, a pair of private investigators went to that person's home and allegedly strong-armed the modder into cancelling a mod called 5M, which would have been an alternative online mode for GTA 5. In that case, the hired goons were said to have claimed they didn't want to get lawyers involved, even though they were quite confident of their legal standing. What can't be denied is that it's a very effective scare tactic. It carries with it the implied threat of, we know where you live, and as someone who has been served by a sheriff on his doorstep with a lawsuit for over $10 million just because I criticised some games online, it's a surreal, disorienting, disarming thing to have your private offline life impacted by your online content creation. We don't see stories of other publishers doing this, despite them also dealing with infringing mods or leaked information, which suggests Take-Two is being unnecessary and wholly arrogant in its behaviour. As a result of this, angered members of the public have put together a boycott for Borderlands 3, Hashtag Boycott Borderlands 3 is the hashtag for the boycott. As you might be able to tell because I said hashtag Boycott Borderland. That itself has been a source of conflict. Some people pointing out that gamer boycotts never really work out. Some think it's an unnecessary punishment for Gearbox software, which doesn't seem to have been involved in any of this. But when you boycott a company's products, there are a lot of people involved in making that product that had nothing to do with the company's behaviour, so... You you know, that's just how boycotts work. I've done this job a long time, I've seen many, many, many video game boycotts, I've never seen one of them work out. But at the same time, I don't blame anyone getting on board with the boycott, it's your money to spend or withhold as you see fit. And let's face it, even outside of this whole situation, Borderlands 3 hasn't had great PR. Much of the negative publicity surrounding Borderlands 3 has been the fault of Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford, which makes the whole Supmato story remarkable in that he didn't seem to have any involvement with it. Randy Pitchford has attacked former employees, he's attacked journalists on Twitter, the latter for correcting him when he was a bit vague and off base in describing the microtransactions in Borderlands 3, and the former, well let's just say that the original Claptrap voice actor ended up sharing details of a time Randy Pitchford physically assaulted him in a hotel lobby, something which the normally chatty Randy Pitchford has shut up about ever since that came to light. That's just part of the whole whirlwind of controversy that's surrounds Gearbox Software specifically because of Randy, and this situation between Supmato, 2K and Take-Two are only drowning Borderlands 3 in yet more of the stuff, yet more controversy. Oh, and Borderlands 3 going Epic Store exclusive didn't help matters either. Now, I really like Borderlands as a series, I really like it, and I have been looking forward to Borderlands 3. The well-documented animosity between myself and Randy Pitchford is something I'm actually pretty good at setting aside when it comes to looking at Gearbox Fox's actual video game work. Historically, I've always been pretty good at that. When I look at a game, I care about the game. Any personal beef I have with people who worked on the game is something I don't generally bring into things. Hell, I've even had positive things to say about, like, at least one, in fact, I think it was just one, digital homicide game. In general, if I have a beef more serious than that, I will just not cover the games at all. But shit, this is turning into one of those things where the controversy is starting to completely overshadow the game, to where I don't even know if the game and the controversy can be divorced anymore. I think it's something I'm just going to constantly be thinking about as I play it now. And that is never a good position for a game or any form of entertainment to be in. I think it's very telling that I'm just waiting for the time between now and Borderlands 3's release to have yet more weird shit happen. To say nothing of what might occur when the game actually comes out, it's been a whole lot of strange with Borderlands 3, a whole lot of strange.